You're listening to Korea Escape on TBS EFM 101.3 megahertz in Seoul and surrounding areas. The weekend is now so close we can almost taste it. And a lot of people's thoughts are turning to leisure and relaxation, perhaps even travel and tourism. That's why we start off our Friday by talking tourism with professional tourist Jimin Yoon. She does a lot of writing, blogging, and videos and advising of clients on the business and art of tourism. So, Jimin is here in the studio with us now. Hi, Jimin. Hello. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? We will talk about how mobile internet has changed our travel. Big time. Mm -hmm. Technology and travel are uh, almost indispensable partners. Mm -hmm. Especially for the smartphone. It has changed our travel a lot, I think. Yeah, because it's always mm -hmm. with you. And yeah. you can always get real-time information. I remember when, you, you know, in the old days, you'd go on a trip and you would buy a volume of this or that uh, book series mm -hmm. on your destination. And that was your source. You know, you yeah. relied on it like a little Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to go buy a guidebook, as you said, at a bookstore, and we had to visit or call the travel agency to book mm -hmm. a flight. And also, we had to take our guidebook every time with us. And we had to make a, like a phone call to book a room or just walk into the hotel. And we did not have any access to reviews or like any stories from the people who have visited the attraction before, except the guidebook. So I remember when I was a teenager, our family had uh, gone to a backpacking in India. It was in 1990s. Wow. So internet was not available at all. And the only thing my dad was depending on was an English guidebook. Mm. And he's not really fluent in English, so <laughs> he had to carry the English guidebook and also another uh, thick Korean English dictionary on his other hand. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so yeah, the, the, the disciples of the guidebook. Uh, I guess in the old days you could say that the guidebook was the internet. I mean, it had wow. all of the places to stay, all of mm -hmm. the things to visit, the backstory. Um, and so on the one hand, it was kind of limited, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the good things that it kind of forced you to do yeah. was to talk to the locals. Mm -hmm. You know, hello, local person, where's the best, uh, mm -hmm. you know, local food in town, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Now the internet and smartphone technology and mobile technology lets you find that out, uh, lets you crowdsource that information, like yeah. at, the, uh, at the touch of a finger. Mm -hmm. That's how it works these days, isn't it? Yeah, it's because we search online first about the destination and... We, you could see endless photos and videos coming up. It mm -hmm. feels like you have been already there before you go mm -hmm. on a trip. Yeah. And you can book a flight and hotel rooms online and take a look at numerous reviews and stories. I, I feel like there are too many reviews so that like it's harder to decide. Because in the old days, you can only go to the places that's on the guidebook. Uh -huh. But these days, there are so many reviews, it's harder for me to choose one. And that's even before you leave. That's like on your PC yeah. internet. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, it's like a virtual trip. <laughs> it's like a virtual trip. And you, you said you, know, you, you almost feel like you've been there. You've seen all the sights and sounds uh, in a two-dimensional space, the screen. And so I guess it sort of steals a little bit of the thunder of actually seeing it for yourself for the first time. Then when you're there with your mobile device, you've got this unbelievable stream of information as well, right? <coughs> yes. And for the mobile, you know, like Wi-Fi is everywhere these days. It feels like everything is connected in the world. Mm -hmm. And with a local SIM card, you can exchange the SIM card to use the local data connection. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about the expensive international roaming fees, and you can just easily use the local data connection. And with the local SIM card, you can use the map function. There's no worries to, for, for getting lost. You can just find the directions on your smartphone, and you can easily take the public transportation because mm -hmm. it searches you every time. Of course. But when I was traveling, it, uh, in, I, I, tra I started traveling in Australia and went to the United States and to Europe. And I had to come back to Mexico. Mm. And when I was there in Mexico, on my smartphone, there was no uh, tap for the public transportation. Uh -huh. So all those, uh, some of the countries that, which lack public transportation management system, they don't really have the directions for the public transportation. Mm -hmm. But still, it uh, shows you how you can drive there and how you can walk there. So yeah. it has changed it, the individual travelers. Um, travel a lot. Yeah, and in those countries where the public transportation isn't quite as strong, there's usually a pretty good network of drivers and tuk-tuks and things like that, taxis. Mm -hmm. So they usually know their way around. You have to be a little careful with some of them sometimes. Mm -hmm. But 
So it, one of the things that technology has really enabled is this concept of uh, sort of last minute, um, what do they call it, bucket shop booking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can go right, and if you're flexible, you can go right up to the deadline. And if the flight is not booked or the hotel is not booked, mm -hmm. you can get some slash rates, right? Yeah, we call it time commerce. Mm. And the cheap flight tickets and hotel rooms, if you buy at the last minute, you can get, get them online. And as you have the smartphones on your hand, you can buy them anytime you want. They even give you the push alarm to let you know when to buy. So it's more convenient for people to just buy it anytime they want. Mm. Mm -hmm. and this is why you see those old guidebooks on sale for like uh, Chon Won in, in a bookstore, <laughs> right? They're, they're yeah. dead cheap now mm -hmm. because they're uh, almost obsolete, not completely obsolete. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to carry them around. Yeah, because there's no reason to carry them around because you can put all of them on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. And there is a new application now which searches every page of the book that is related to the GPS data of you. Mm. So I thought it was very smart because when you... For example, if you're in San Francisco, they search all the books on San Francisco and they search pages of San Francisco for the guidebook of California. That's so it gives you more uh, information on the area. Mm. And not only the guidebook, they only have like novels and even video clips that are related to the location where you're at right now. Yeah. That's an interesting sort of retro way to dig up and scrape that information and make it digital. But so much of the information today, uh, there are applications out there where you can say, okay, right near where I'm standing, I want nightlife, I want cocktails, or I want a museum, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something like that, or I want a beach. And it'll say, oh, yeah, well, just five minutes down the road, there's this. Mm -hmm. And that's because of social media, right? That's yeah. because people are either putting their, uh, their destination, their restaurant, their bar proactively online, or people are rating stuff and it's just coming up via the applications. Mm -hmm. So social is just humongous. Yes, definitely. Because you mentioned about the reviews and nowadays like all the global travelers are uploading the reviews and they're all translated by like automatically translated by the system mm -hmm. and you can see the other people uh, like um, the other people's review on different languages and it, you can just understand it anyway mm. and there's a it, 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 it's a sense of being in a community even mm -hmm. if you are a solo traveler mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you're so connected yes. kind of takes away that feeling of isolation doesn't mm -hmm. it yeah the social media has changed that kind of like uh, that kind of issue a lot I think as people are always connected to online with their smartphone the concept of companions who you travel with had changed it also because social media allows you to feel that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Although a solo traveler is physically away from their friends and family, it does not feel like it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, when I was traveling alone in Central America, I was tired of local food. I miss Korean food so badly. <laughs> okay. And I felt homesick. And thus I uploaded uh, what I have ate today, like tacos and nachos, even though I really like them. I uploaded them and asked my friend to upload photos of tasty Korean foods you had today as replies. Just vicariously eating Korean mm -hmm. food. I would have thought uh, you were going with this to, you know, I, I want to find a Korean food restaurant in Central mm -hmm. America because they're all over the world now, right? So you can get your kimchi jjigae in uh, yeah. Guatemala or Honduras or wherever. Mm -hmm. But those small, like, cities, they don't really have anything that's related to Korean. Okay. That's why I kind of use social media to uh, see the photos of Korean <laughs> food. <laughs> yeah. Did that ease the homesickness? It did. It I would definitely think that would increase did. it. And no? all the friends had like a mentioning that like, oh, uh, think about like Korean food like this, and they like gave me a good like replies, which is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing social media, of course, allows you to do right is, and you, you do have to be a little careful with this, is in real time, day by day, you can find new companions for day trips, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, nowadays people find like companions via online while traveling. There is a new application for smartphone, uh, which was launched a uh, few months back, and it allows people to share where they are traveling right now and find people whom they can travel together. Yeah. So you can travel with new people on like met online, yeah. and they upload their uh, itinerary on uh, like a travel community or blog, and they meet up with other travelers yeah. and have fun. And it's great for. Uh, sometimes saving some costs like ride sharing, like hey, uh, you know we're all going. I'm I'm going out to Angkor Wat tomorrow. Who wants mm -hmm. to you know go in with me on a car, or a van or whatever? 
and uh, you can shave off some of your your traveling costs that way, as well as getting some fun people to go with. And it's also good for having a meal because, for like for example, dim sum, you cannot go there alone to have. All those, like to taste all those things, on mm-hmm. you can find people to go together and share the cost and have more food to taste. Social dining. We just mm-hmm. uh, the other week did something like uh, on social dining, mm-hmm. on a different segment of this program. Mm-hmm. So, do you think this is all positive? This uh, digitization or this uh, technification of, of traveling and tourism is it unambiguously positive or uh, is it mixed? Well, I think it's just a matter of choice because. It is true that smartphones and internet have made our travels easier and more convenient. However, it does not mean that you cannot travel in a traditional way anymore. It's a matter of choice. You can still take a guidebook with you and travel without smartphones. Hotels still accept walk-ins, and you can still go for coincidences without planning and going through all the information online. You go the way the old writers of the guidebooks used to go. Yeah. They didn't have guidebooks. They were the writers of the guidebooks. Yeah. You go and you ask the locals, yeah. and that is so much fun. You know, you just ask the the taxi driver where the best food is in town,、mm-hmm. where the actual real people eat, and you 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 better know he's going to know where it is. So, so I think it's kind of positive for those travelers who are really not used to that kind of like conversation or communicating with locals. They can rely more on smartphones and try to. Go travel by themselves first, and maybe kind of change it to the local communicating travel. There you go.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Why don't you tell us a couple of your favorite smartphone applications?、Um, there are too many applications to mention, actually. But、uh, what is interesting for me recently is that the public organizations are producing a smartphone application by themselves、uh, to provide support for the individual travelers. Uh, my favorite one would be iTour Seoul to travel around Seoul. Okay, it's the official Seoul travel application made by the Seoul Metropolitan Government.、Hmm. And as its slogan, it's Seoul at your fingertips. It does not provide. It does provide everything you need while traveling in Seoul. So the application services in five languages: Korean, English, Japanese, and. Chinese simplified and traditional. Okay, so the two lettering or the two symbol systems of Chinese there,、mm-hmm. and、uh, I guess it gets you all around the city. Whether you want、yeah. to see, tr- you know, traditional sites or whether you want to do,、mm-hmm. you know, more shopping kind of stuff like that. Yeah,、right? it has a directory of thousands of attractions, hotels, restaurants, shopping destinations, and more. So all the basic information you need, such as currency, like useful numbers. And tourist information centers are all also covered, and also the application recommends the tour itineraries, which are all approved by the city government. So it's、mm-hmm. all approved. So it's just really nice. The best feature of this application, I think, is that it shows attractions in surrounding area based on your GPS information. So it is really convenient to find somewhere nearby, even though you do not know the area well. Very cool. I tour Seoul, and just real briefly, is there anything for outside of Seoul, like Korea in general? Well, but the Korea Tourism Organization has the application for the Korea travel.、Mm. But the one that I want to introduce, which I thought very interesting, was the new app called the Just Touch It, and this is for Koreans who are traveling abroad. So. Outside of oh、Korea. okay so this、uh-huh. is ah、uh, uh, all right so、mm-hmm. this is、uh, b- despite the fact that it's for the by the KTO it's for Koreans who are going outside of、mm-hmm. Korea not for people who are traveling around Korea、mm-hmm. okay、there's, that's an important there's distinction al- there is also、uh, another app for traveling within Korea but this one is for Koreans traveling abroad which I thought was very interesting because Korea Tourism Organization does usually does yeah、uh, work for seems a little bit off brief for them、Korea. yeah yeah but I think. This app application can be useful for foreigners who are traveling in Korea but do not speak the language because this application helps you to communicate in emergency situations. So、uh-huh. it's more about the language translation kind of thing. But its service includes 